Hello, welcome to my presentation titled Mobile Computing Support to Ubiquitous Learning. The aim of the following presentation is to provide some context on how important mobile computing is to the application of ubiquitous learning. My name is Dave Brown, and this presentation is being delivered to meet the course requirements of Athabasca University's Comp 637 Mobile Computing. The content of this presentation was gathered following a literature review on the subject of ubiquitous learning and mobile learning. Uh, I made effort to focus the literature review on papers that were delivered in the last three years. That said, um, there were a number of uh, important papers that I really couldn't uh, omit that go back as far as uh, 2005. And uh, my reference list will be available at the end of this end of this presentation. So, without further ado, let's get started. With regards to background, you know, the beginning of mobile learning. Um, started in the early 1970s. Um, the uh, DynaBook, which came out of the Xerox Palo, Al Palo Alto Research Center, uh, was the um, first uh, attempt at a portable, portable personal learning device. Um, but more importantly, in the last number of years, there has been a rapid advancement um, in wireless communications um, and mobile technologies, and this has a lot to do with popularity. So, as a result, the use of these, uh, these uh, devices um, is, is popping up all over the place, from mobile gaming to, of course, into, into the classroom. So, adoption is really the, the name of the game with regards to uh, the advancement here. And that the UN Telecommunications Agency um, last year um, predicted that the number of mobile subscriptions had, had increased to 5 billion worldwide and that mobile broadband subscriptions had, had passed the 1 billion mark. Um, a lot of numbers earlier this year have showed that 40% uh, of U.S. teens plan on buying an iPhone in the fourth quarter of this year and that in the last three years, smartphone penetration amongst the age group of 18 to 24 year olds has arisen by 20%. So, and that nearly all college students are using their phones to access the mobile web. So we can see that the fact that uh, this, this adoption rate and this penetration rate of, of mobile devices has, uh, has and continues to have a significant impact on education. So t to kick this off, we'll talk about adaptive learning. And adaptive learning, uh, I guess it's first important to, to identify that it's uh, a classroom learning environment is not typically conductive to uh, adaptive education techniques, um, while at the same time ad adaptive education has been, uh, is considered the most important educational method and has been that way for about 2,000 years. And it talks about personalized teaching and learning where learners are stakeholders in the process and that the education system focuses on the learner. Um, there's an, and, and in keeping that in mind, um, keep, there's a great uh, quote from Elliot Soloway who is a uh, um, expert in mobile learning from the University of Michigan, and it goes like this, the kids these days are not digital kids. The digital kids were in the 90s. The kids of today are mobile, and that's the difference. Digital is the old way of thinking. Mobile is the new way. And so for us to consider adaptive learning, we have to consider that today's kids are mobile. And this is uh, where we move in from e-learning to mobile learning to ubiquitous learning. And the challenge, of course, is is how do you identify uh, the, the characteristics of a particular learner, the context that that learner is, is working within, and then do all that dynamically um, to best provide the learning experience. Well, towards that way was first was electronic learning or e-learning. And e-learning was all about providing a platform uh, for adaptive learning, uh, which changed the learner from being a passive receptor, from being a, from being a, a child sitting at a, a desk in a classroom, to collaborating in the educational process. And the platform that, that was used for e-learning, of course, was the computer network um, or the internet, um, not necessarily synonymous in this case. And e-learning, uh, what that brought really was providing education at the right time. This brings us into mobile learning, which has a lot to, um, you know, has a lot to do with ubiquitous learning. So it's important to spend a, a bit of time here what uh, mobile learning did was, uh, while it's related to e-learning, um, it, it's different. Um, and it starts talking about the, the application of mobile devices. So while it's an extended form of e-learning, it does have its own characteristics. 
Um, and, and most popular, the uh, most popular definition tends to be learning anytime and anywhere. Uh, and this pops up through um, a number of the uh, formative uh, uh, research and uh, studies um, on the subject of, of mobile learning and, and, and e-learning as well. Um, now, some some definitions change slightly. Um, some of them uh, will talk just about the fact that it's any learning that's done not at a fixed predetermined location. Uh, another definition will say that it's any uh, it's any learning that is done with a using mobile technologies, and then some take bridge that gap to say it's both. So for the case of uh, so for the case of this um, the rest of this uh, discussion. Um, We'll consider that it, it provides mobile learning provides education at the right time and at the right place. Rather than uh, going further into the controversy of of is uh, is uh, is mobile learning only ha only one of these at a time. Now, to do these to provide education at the right time at the right place, it's about uh, enabling context to our features um, to a certain extent with mobile learning. Now, so to look at well, what does what applications does mobile learning provide? Well, here's a here's a look at that. So first off, it's it's providing on the move um, learning, so that while not replacing face-to-face -face class, it, that students can now learn on the move and, and complement what they do in the classroom. They can be you know out um, at, in a museum um, learning rather than in the classroom, where they can be in the field um, doing work. Learning can be location sensitive. Um, when when uh, when a learner goes to a particular location, that can um, can push um, educational content to that student. It provides students um, the opportunity, uh, the learner, uh, the opportunity to review uh, learning materials at any time, um, and review that, and even take notes. Of course, uh, what a lot of uh, mobile devices are initially were used for for communications. So this enables collaboration, both amongst uh, amongst students and and with their uh, and with their uh, with their instructors and teachers. This is uh, one issue here with uh, having access to the e-learning materials um, that are that are available. And of course, as uh, this tends to be one of the uh, the major um, uses right now in, in the college format. Augmented reality is, is something that's a bit newer. Um, this is you know allowing um, the learner to see through their device, one could say, and and, and then uh, over top of that um, information is, is putting the educational um, content um, to there so that uh, they are uh, they're seeing more than than uh, than just what their eyes are showing. Game is a very uh, games are a really powerful tool tool for learning, and it's, it's something that's being used uh, um, most successfully right now, um, as it motivates um, it motivates uh, learning. And uh, and the last one here is reminders and schedulers. Um, simply, you know, being able to remind a student as they leave the classroom that uh, they have homework, or that uh, as they approach a library that you know they can go and pick up that book they've been waiting for. So mobile learning is about complementing e-learning and complementing traditional learning methods. Um, it's important from a from a teaching and educator perspective um, to the technology world that all of these uh, methodologies have their own place um, and they don't replace one another. Well, this then moves us into ubiquitous learning, and what we're going to look at here is is what is different between ubiquitous learning and mobile learning. Well. It's first important to uh, talk quickly about ubiquitous computing because really ubiquitous computing is what enables ubiquitous learning. And because of the accelerated um, and improvements, uh, accelerated development and improvements in wireless telecommunications, um, networks, um, increasing computer computing power, better battery technology, um, and uh, an improved uh, software architectures, uh, we're seeing ubiquitous computing in our daily lives. We're seeing computing being embedded into our daily lives. So ubiquitous computing not only provides information to users at any time and at any place, but it's now able to provide users the right information at the right time 
in a way that is best conducive to passing that to the, to the user, and even selecting which users um, best get that information. So ubiquitous computing is, is what ubiquitous learning is based on. It is, it is a uh, technology that drives it. So just as uh, some mobile learning had some controversies in terms of definitions, there are some definitions um, in the ubiquitous learning um, realm that, that don't quite cut the mustard, in, in my opinion, at least as I did my reading. Um, early, uh, early uh, one of the first definitions that was found in, in early on in 2005 was talking about ubiquitous learning uh, providing anyone the anytime and anywhere by using ubiquitous computing technologies. Well, I think that's true. It's not really getting at the heart of, of how it's different from mobile learning. Um, and, and there are even some 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 definitions that essentially are exactly the same um, as uh, mobile learning. And I think as you get into it, there are some very important differences. What ubiquitous learning really is, is it's the combination of mobile learning and all the benefits you get from there, as well as adding the context awareness. So these devices can assist the learner by understanding its location, its co the surrounding context, understand the learning profile of that individual, um, and then providing the learning materials, considering all of those aspects. Ubiquitous com computing um, supports a collaborative and situated learning approach. So that's a really big deal and when it comes to ubiquitous learning. So one of the uh, one of the really interesting uh, parts that I came as I was looking through this is uh, um, one of the one of the real uh, that captures the essence of what ubiquitous learning is is a paper that was written actually by um, by some staff members at Athabasca University and they talk about the 5R adaptation concept and it uh, comes to here it talks about the right time the right place the right things the right way so this is the five R's that are used that they use in there. They talk about the right time. And that's not just talking about providing learning uh, at the right date and time. It also talks about the right learning progress level. If a student uh, isn't ready for in their progress of their learning, you know, then uh, ubiquitous learning can, can, can assist in, in that. The right location um, the, is uh, concerned with the current geographic location of, of, a, of a learner. The right device, you know, um, this is an issue these days with the plethora of different mobile device types. Um, it's important that any um, any um, use of a device uh, to support uh, ubiquitous learning um, can support, you know, whether it be an Android um, or an iOS or a laptop or these are all things you have to con consider. The right context, this is talking about um, making sure that the, the framework is, is good for learning objects, learning activities, the learning instruction. And finally, they talk about the right learner. Um, it's important that the, um, they can look into the, the, the learning profile and the learning style, um, you know, looking at the individuality and the personality of, of learners. So these are all things that the ubiquitous learning is about um, that that um, that can cover off that is you know that that not all of the mobile or e-learning um, couldn't think of. So the main characteristics of ubiquitous learning is that uh, uh, it's permanent. So le learners will not lose their work uh, like you would in some of the other uh, frameworks. Accessibility: learners will have access to to their learning the learning content anywhere they are. Immediacy talks to the fact that information is available immediately. Um, you don't have to wait. Um, it, it can be uh, um, you, it can be a push pull. You don't have to wait to sync, um, you know, back in a classroom, or, and that kind of uh, um, information is there right away. And uh, interactivity. Um, this talks about the um, the issues of communication. Really, is the fact that learners can now better interact with their teachers, with their peers, or maybe with experts, uh, both synchronously, asynchronously, you know, um, all the same um, reasons why we, we love our, our uh, cell phones and our smartphones today. And finally here, the last uh, characteristic is uh, the situation of instructional activities. Um, this is talking about embedding the learning into our daily life, um, is that 
the, those activities can be put in the we put into our lives at the best times for us to learn. So looking a little bit into the research that's been happening in the in the mobile and ubiquitous learning um, realms. So as you can see here from this graph, um, this is essentially, a, a, this was a, a, a paper that was done to look at, well, how much research is really being done in the last decade. Um, and this is to, looks at papers that have been published um, and in six of the major um, uh, journals. And as you can see, um, using keywords dealing with mobile learning and ubiquitous learning, that uh, you know, in these last 10 years, specifically in the last five, um, there has been a, a, a spike in, in the research that's being conducted um, in, the, in this area. Now if you look here, um, we can see that uh, and who is doing, and this is just to depict who is doing this studying? Who's doing the, who are doing, doing these studies? So if you look at the first five years of that 10-year period, we see that the USA was um, was doing, you know, not the lion's share, but you know they were doing a little bit more. But now you can clearly see in these these last five years um, of this data is that Taiwan is really leading the way. Now it's also probably good to note when you look at those um, numbers there, it shows the actual uh, papers that are being uh, uh, they're being provided. You know, these two pie charts aren't equal. So this is a little bit more realistic, is that uh, there wasn't much being done in the first five years, and you can see that you know, there's a lot more being done today. So what advantages are there to ubiquitous learning? Why, why is this such a big deal? Well, first off, you can hold a mobile device, and you can take this mobile device anywhere that you need to. That's a huge benefit to thinking about picking up your desktop at home or picking up all the library books um, uh, that you need for a particular class. You know, this is very, very powerful. Another thing is, is look, look at all these sensors that are available. You know, um, the standard smartphone will have you know, Wi-Fi, a GPS, uh, motion sensors, cameras. You know, and these are all right inside the palm of your hand. Uh, when it comes to cost, you know, the the cost of a uh, the cost of a mobile device is significantly less than what you would see for, you know, a desktop or a library, you know, a library full of books. And and the money also covers over too that the the cost of of um, of getting that information of the network access is coming down as well. Another big benefit is is this is mobile. I can use this in the classroom. I can use this while walking down the street. So these are huge, uh, um, huge benefits in terms of uh, um, using these. And of course, not a, I'm not the only person that has these devices. You know, my friends and my teachers, and my peers, and again, these experts have them, and I can collaborate with them. I can share my work, or I can have teachers, you know, pass me that information whenever, whenever, wherever, whenever. <laughs> of course, yes, there are, there are certainly some uh, disadvantages as well. And really these uh, disadvantages come out into three different areas. First off, we'll look at technical challenges. Um, mobile devices tend to have smaller screens. Since they're smaller, it's a little bit cumbersome often to input um, information into the devices. Uh, they, may, they tend to have a limited battery life as compared to something that uh, is actually plugged into the wall. The, the hardware at this point um, is a little is less powerful. And data transfer, uh, while I did say that the price of uh, broadband is coming down, it, it is it is more expensive, and in particular parts of the world, that that's can, could be a, a very restrictive use for for mobile uh, devices. You have a restricted layout for the kinds of um, buttons or the kinds of information that you can display. Um, because of all these devices, um, because of that penetration that we talked about uh, earlier, there can be inter interoperability and security challenges as a result of that. Um, and so, sort of the last one is is the is the te from a technical perspective is reworking existing e-learning materials and making them accessible by mobile platforms. So another aspect is the social challenges, and and this one in a lot of the reading says is that technical can be overcome in time, but the social ones is going to take uh, a little bit more work. Users can first off get frustrated um, because of some of the technical problems, and if you get frustrated with the device, um, you may cease to want to keep using it. Um, 
location privacy, because these devices devices know where you are and, and may need to share that as a part of the learning process, location privacy concerns could be a, a big social challenge. Another issue is, is that people find that while now there's frequent interruptions um, and it's increasingly hard to, to concentrate um, on a specific task that may not be what you're being interrupted about. So that may be you're being interrupted learning, or maybe you're interrupted doing something else in your life by learning. So it's um, something that people need to, um, under, to get over. There is an accessibility and a cost barrier. Um, it talks about you know the digital divide. Um, certainly in North America, um, less of an issue, but when you look into um, some, you know, um, in, into certain African nations and whatnot, this, this is proving to be um, unachievable. Um, mobile learning and, and ubiquitous learning is unachievable due to the uh, digital divide. Uh, there is a frequent change in the technology and the device types, um, and uh, it's important that you know um, that's a technological side, but it's more issue from a social side. Is people getting used to new technology or new new types of uh, devices, which is something that really a pencil and a pen um, or the standard computer really hasn't changed um, that different. There was always a keyboard and mouse, um, and now things are changing quite a bit when you come to talk about mobile devices. Um, there is, you know, from a social perspective, there's some pirating and copyright um, and content security considerations. Um, how much easier is it, you know, are you making sure that the, the educators that are putting the, the content there are being paid um, correctly um, for, for the use of, of that content? And the last area is the educational challenge, and this one's a harder one to, to, to cover because this is such a new, new realm that um, some of the challenges have not even been identified yet. Um, but there's now no restriction to a learning timetable. You can be learning 24/7. Well, there are times when you, you uh, again, um, interruptions are not are not advantageous to learning. And, you know, how do you track the results uh, and how do you properly use um, um, mobile mobile devices to support this? And it's something that um, had very little work has been done thus far. And really, um, no studies have been done to talk about really this moves towards a what's called a lifeline, a, a lifetime of learning. Um, you're not talking about just you know school kids now. You're talking about people that are um, uh, learning throughout their lifetime. And there's very little work that's been done on that. And there is a conceptual difference between e-learning and mobile learning and ubiquitous learning. And um, the educators really uh, are still trying to grasp um, and understand that. While there's technology and, and uh, putting in the hands of uh, of both teachers and students, you have to understand that a bit more. So really this boils down to on the educational side is there's a lack of proper learning strategies um, to assist students to acquire the knowledge using um, these fantastic new technologies. Um, and it's probably worth to note that um, what gets a lot of news these days when it comes to mobile phones and smartphones is the fact that countries all over the world, India, Brunei, Sri Lanka, um, even schools in Toronto and New York are banning mobile phones outright um, where they could be used and leveraged um, in the education system. So it's time to look at a few examples here. Um, uh, just to talk briefly, um, probably one of the first uh, documented cases of uh, ubiquitous learning was the use of uh, was, was a digital ubiquitous museum in, in Tokyo in, in early 2004-2005 uh, where RFID chips were placed in various locations in various um, uh, parts of the museum where the mobile device would then uh, be prompted when they were within the, within the uh, location of that to be prompted on what that particular item was or what this part of the museum was. Um, and things have got, you know, that was a pretty um, a, a pretty baseline um, activity. Now things have got a lot more interesting. Um, one that, that there's a lot of reading to, uh, to be done on is what the is called local and it's a learning support model and it's uh, local stands for location and context aware learning and it's a, essentially an architecture um, that uh, covers off um, the aspects that the various aspects and the characteristics that we spoke of earlier um, to deliver ubiquitous learning. Um, there's a really interesting uh, um, to read up on efforts to make Moodle mobile, um, and this was really last year. There was um, some some specific work done on that at the Mo uh, Moodle Moot conference, um, and because really Moodle is 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 a quite widespread um, 
software platform for uh, education, um, but really um, there's a lot of small efforts being done to make Moodle mobile, but um, nothing, uh, no huge steps have been taken forward. Um, and I know personally, from my personal experience, I, I had wished these past number of years working with the that Athabasca University had provided a mobile experience, um, as that's the way that I tend to um, uh, to use Moodle um, even now. So, of course, uh, other examples of, of using ubiquitous learning is is um, not um, not from a, a traditional way, but also to allow um, the recording of observations. So you can you can take um, learners out to the field, and you can observe. Uh, they've used been used uh, a number of times to observe and collect data in woodlands, um, uh, whether that be to um, to look at flora and fauna, um, and uh, then be able to to comment or to uh, to to work on quizzes um, in the field. Um, there's been a really good work um, in 2009 with regards to using uh, ubiquitous learning and, and mobile devices to support uh, learning, to, su to effective learning support, to, to guide um, inexperienced researchers in the practice of single crystal X-ray diffusion, sorry, X-ray diffraction. Um, so this is a case of um, not imparting new knowledge, but su but supporting um, those uh, those learners that have that have recently learned this and are actually going out and, and doing the work. I spoke a little bit about game. You know, uh, there's a lot of you, a lot of mobile devices from a learning perspective that are being using game mechanics um, to assist in learning. So it's allowing allowing the learner to collect points and to unlock achievements to make learning more fun and to encourage their participation. Um, and this is the way that people are already using their smartphones. So they're already used to playing games with their phones. And this is a, an excellent way of, of, of uh, introducing um, students to this, to this concept of ubiquitous learning. Um, I've spoken already about museums. There have been a plethora of museums. Uh, I think it's a really good indoor controlled environment in which to, uh, uh, where you, know, you really can't go to a museum. And, and the whole idea of going to a museum is to learn. So now having a mobile device with you um, you know, to support your navigation as well as um, you know a, a progressive learning pattern um, is, is a fantastic uh, case. Another case that was of interest was is that there's um, that the cultural courses have even used um, the same idea that they would use in a, a in a museum, but applied it to a to a temple where um, it would it would assist a, a class with um, uh, considering you know the the religious side of of, of a temple. Um, and I think, uh, lastly, there's a, there's some really good work being done in southern Taiwan with regards to um, co data collection to support ecological observations in wetlands. Um, and that's probably one of the more uh, recent um, um, cases. So future work, you know, there are, there are certainly future work to, to be done, and we know that this is going to be, um, you know, a popular um, uh, a popular way of for education educators to, to use technology. One thing we need to do just a basis, and, and will always be the case, is to improve the quality of the e-learning systems that, that are in use. And one thing when we talked, when I looked at the, the research and we saw those studies, what, what was lacking was is that a lot of those studies dealt with elementary schools, high schools, and colleges. What it was not doing was it wasn't investigating the use of um, e, uh, ubiquitous learning for teachers and adults. So this is something that, that needs to be uh, researched. Something that hasn't been talked about really at all is is quantifying the effectiveness of ubiquitous learning. How you know how um, how good is a how good is the learning that a student does using ubiquitous methods compared to a traditional in the classroom type of learning, um, or is there a hybrid blended um, uh, System that that works better, and and how do you quantify that? Uh, you know, is this a 50-50 split? Is there so many hours in the classroom that 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 uh, needs to happen? And, and of course, that would all depend on the various topics that would happen to be uh, studied. And really, that the biggest one here that was outlined earlier is the education world needs to really develop new strategies and tools um, to support to um, to really leverage. Um, this technology and the concept of, of ubiquitous learning. So, in conclusion, um, ubiquitous learning is, is it has a huge growth. Um, there was a report by Ambient Insight in 08 
um, and it talked about the U.S. market for mobile learning products. Um, and they were talking about an annual growth rate of 21.7%, with revenues in 2007 reaching over $500 million. And that's a good number of years ago. So uh, and, and, and last year in the Horizon report, um, it talked about uh, mobile computing that would enter the mainstream uh, in, uh, in university campuses this year. And I think that's clearly uh, the case. And they're saying in the, uh, in the elementary and high school st um, programs that they would expect that it would, uh, uh, it would enter the mainstream um, within the next two to three years. So we can see that with the adoption rate of mobile technologies uh, and the fact that so many students have these devices uh, and that the education system um, really needs to embrace, will continue to need to embrace this and improve it uh, for the benefit um, of their students and their learners. And the following two slides are, uh, are the references that were used throughout this, uh, throughout this presentation. Thanks so much for, uh, for listening. Again, uh, I'm Dave Brown, and that was uh, the mobile, mobile uh, computing support to ubiquitous learning. Thanks so much.